how about if I if you don't beat me in the first two games, you have to make a sign talking about the fact that I'm the greatest at NHL. Florida. Florida and Tampa, and you'll have to hold it everywhere. <laughs> Welcome back to the Injury Gurus. You got Matt here. We have cameraman Mike, Al. This is the channel where we talk about why injuries happen to pro athletes, how they happen, the prehab, the rehab, the fantasy implications, and give you guys a little bit of a look at what the anatomy of some of these injuries look like. Quick update for everybody. Last week at the Super Bowl, obviously by now you guys know the Chiefs won, so we've changed our bet and Matt has to put my name on his golf wedge. That is a permanent fixture. That is a bet that I would recommend to everyone. If you want a permanent fixture in your friend's life, bet them to put your name on their wedge. Last week was Bad injury week. reserve week. It was awful. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, quick rundown. Carlson. That's a huge one. Broken thumb. Out I for mean, the year. it's not that big only because the Sharks just seem to... Well, it's big because he's their best player. Well, I mean, and now they've all but guaranteed Ottawa a draft pick, so yeah. he's out, injury reserve. Injury reserve, so that's an automatic drop on all yeah. your fantasy teams. Uh, Andreas Johansson, he's out eight weeks. Man, that guy, again, also can't catch a break, blocks another. Or this one, sorry, a little bit of a freak accident. He blocked a shot first, and then for this one, he... He kind of gets tripped by his own player. And surgery on his knee, but surgery we don't know too knee. much about it, so that's an immediate drop for, him. yeah, you know, again, a fringe guy. In the NBA, we had... Uh, Dame Lillard, who we're going to talk about in detail. That's a massive one for everybody, right? Yeah. Um, we had Paul George, hamstring, day-to-day. -day. Right. Yep. So he's still good. We had Patrick Beverly, day-to-day. He's another day one. Day. Yep. Uh, we had the unfortunate incident with Bo Meester. We had Sammy Vatnin go down with a concussion. So a lot of injuries this time of year. Nazem Kadri, As well. Your boy. Yeah, day-to-day. Yeah. Yeah, so that's not too bad. But what we want to talk about today is Dame Lillard. This one is super interesting because mm -hmm. it's a common movement that we've seen other injuries occur. So if you guys didn't see the video, uh, Dame goes to push off and ends up pulling his groin mm -hmm. muscle. Yeah. But what I want to talk about and get you involved here because I'm doing all the talking is... Like usual. <laughs> How does somebody get injured in so many different ways pushing off of the, the same motion, essentially? We always talk about functional movements, right? And this is a good good example of a functional movement, right? So any of you guys who go to the gym, they train, you go see your physio, your chiro, they'll talk about functional movements all the time. So things like squatting, things like lunging, um, step ups on a box, these are similar movements, right? For the advanced athlete, like a basketball player, that's gonna be taken a step further, right? So now you're doing that movement of a step up or a lunge, but you're doing it at full speed and you're trying to accelerate and it's supposed to be an explosive movement. There's a lot of different muscles and a lot of different patterns that come into play with this, okay? We don't typically think of the groin muscles as a big component for jumping, but there are two muscles that are really important with this. One is your adductor longus, and one is your adductor magnus. And where are those? And I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll bring in Bill for that, rather than pointing at my own groin. Okay, um, but not yet though. But not yet. Not yet. We're gonna okay. hold off for, on Bill for a second, but they es essentially start on your pelvis and they insert down onto your femur, which is the long bone of your, of your leg, okay. okay? And what they do is they, one, provide stability, but during a jumping motion, they actually help your body flex forward, just like Lillard did, as he because he, he's driving to the bucket, so he kind of flexes forward, and he pushes off, which includes an external rotation or a lateral rotation of that thigh. Those two muscles help in that movement. Generally, it's going to be a little bit different for everybody, but groin injuries typically happen when your ability for your core to stabilize the trunk during the movement breaks down. So, um, you know, and again, we're, we're dealing with a movement that involves uh, flexion of the body. There's a little bit of rotation happening. He's getting bumped at the same time. So his core needs to stay really stable as his leg and his hips are able to drive that power through the movement. I think it, we it, should yeah. maybe head over to Bill go a little bit early. Yeah, let's go see our buddy. Bring in our favorite segment of the day, Anatomy for regular people. Ah, oh, sweet. Okay, different sides of Bill today. All right, we're over here with Bill. Yep. Bill, uh, happy Valentine's Day, buddy. Uh, we're gonna be talking a little bit about Dame's injury. Mm -hmm. So we're going straight down to Bill's pubis area. 
appreciate you using the correct terms. Yeah, there. right? Pretty good. So we are going down to the pubic bone. Uh, the two muscles we're gonna be talking about, adductor longus and adductor magnus. Adductor just means bring a muscle that brings, or something that brings one bone closer to the other, and in this case, one that's closer to the midline of the body, okay? So these bones initiate off the pubis, okay? Adductor magnus comes down maybe a little bit more than halfway down the femur, mm -hmm. right? So we know that's a big bone in our, in our lower body. Adductor magnus, as it sounds like, is a big, huge muscle, bigger muscle. Mm -hmm. It's gonna come down a lot farther down to approximately down the linea aspera and down onto the knee here. Do those well. muscles attach into the hamstring at all? So the adductor magnus actually acts partly as a hamstring muscle. So it will help with the hamstring. Mm, as well. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. So when something happens like a groin pull, mm -hmm. is it possible to be misdiagnosed as a hamstring or is that oh, very 100%. rare? 100%. And sometimes hamstring injuries can be misdiagnosed as adductor magnus injuries for sure. That's super yeah. interesting to know because I mean, how does that impact the rehab of the athlete? In that particular Tremendously, situation. Tremendously, right? And that's where the skill of the practitioner to actually go in and be able to test the right muscles, make the right clinical diagnosis. Um, that's also why with pro athletes, we use MRIs way more liberally than with the average public, mm -hmm. right? So an injury, a muscle injury to the everyday athlete, basically no MRI. And NBA All-Star, he's going in right away because we want to make sure we're making that correct diagnosis and mm -hmm. we know how bad that tear or that strain is immediately. Gotcha. So what joints, ligaments, other muscle mm -hmm. groups are impacted in, in this particular injury? So I mean, you do have a, a group of smaller groin muscles as well. Um, and then you're also gonna, like we mentioned, the hamstrings are gonna be involved with this, but also the quad, okay? And even sometimes the glutes on the back side of the pelvis, mm -hmm. okay? And if we wanna because, take a look at yeah, Bill's glutes, there they are. They're gonna be sitting here like this and like this a bit, okay? So glute max here and then glute min and need a little bit off to the side there. They're important because they're going to determine a lot of that internal external rotation that we just talked about, mm. right? Um, over on the couch. So if these guys aren't externally rotating or internally rotating the way we need them to, that's gonna put more pressure on the groin muscles to then do a little bit extra work for us. And that's when they're gonna be overloaded and we're gonna suffer a tear or a sprain or a strain. Gotcha. Okay. okay. What's nice about this is kind of if my hand become, becomes that muscle, we can see a little bit better what would happen that as he's bending and he's loading that knee joint up, right? He's loading his leg up. We need this muscle to stabilize and we can see how it actually has to, you know, as we push off, it's going to like, or actually we go, as we go into that movement, it's going to bring the knee and that bone closer to the body right. into that jumping motion. And then as it's, it's going to explode out of that position, right? So gotcha. as he loads really deep into that movement, driving to the hoop, that's when he tears it and we see he doesn't actually jump off that leg at all. That is super interesting. That, that's really interesting. And I mean, he obviously immediately starts holding his groin yeah. so much to the point where the announcers say like, oh, I think, he got, he, I think he got clipped. Yeah. All right, meet us back on the couch um, where we're gonna talk a little bit about the rehab, prehab, and the fantasy repercussions to Dame Lillard based on this injury. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Bill. See you in a minute. <sighs> thanks, Bill. Informative as always. And thanks for sharing your loins with us today. Groin is something that I think everybody suffers from in some shape or form. You know, mm -hmm. I think everybody uses that term very loosely. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think I have a groin strain. I pulled my groin. Uh, you have a groin injury. Uh, but I mean, like... Very common to the Joe athlete, right? That's what I mean. You get back out and play soccer, rec league, get back playing hockey. Um, very, very common area for soreness when you're getting back to sports. But is it, I think, is that just like a catch-all term? or is it something that is commonly injured? Like, mm. you know, do people just say, ah, I pulled my groin or? It is a little bit of a catch-all term because anytime somebody has soreness in the area, I think that's our kind of common term to use mm -hmm. for the general public. It's also a group of muscles, as we just learned with, with Bill, right? So it's not just one muscle. But what are we doing from a fantasy protocol for Dame? Because I, I think not a lot of people understand what this could be, because yeah. for me, it seems like it could be short-term, but it could also be super long-term because it's such an important aspect of his game. It is one of these injuries. They always say with hockey players, as soon as you get it, it's not going away for the rest of the year. You might come back, but but it's still gonna be a bother for the rest of the year until the off season. So what does Portland do because they're not making the playoffs? See, I think they, they still think they are making the playoffs, so I expect him back in two weeks. Okay. Um, luckily, they have the All-Star break. So uh, they've kind of ruled him out at least two weeks. So maybe he misses one to two extra games, but I think that's all we see him miss. Okay, but so But is we'll it gonna him. impact his play? 
probably. Yeah. yeah. I mean, is I he going to be gonna scoring him. at the same rate that he's scoring at? I think it's going to affect him through the next couple couple weeks for sure. So okay. we might not expect the same output from him or at least the same uh, shooting percentage from him. Gotcha. So that, take note of that, guys. For the fantasy guys, that's, I mean, obviously a huge implication to what you're doing down the stretch here in the playoffs with your teams. Um, all right. Well, I think that's it for today. Yeah. We've talked a lot about groins, which is a different one, obviously, and we've uh, mentioned some of the big injuries that happened last week. I think you guys can expect to see this for the le- le- the rest of the year, the next two months for sure. You see all the guys getting tired, the injuries are building up. Yeah, especially the overuse guys. Like Carlson obviously playing so many minutes, mm-hmm. he's bound to get injured. Now, thumb is an interesting one. Usually it's muscular. Yeah. But Dame definitely was an overuse definitely injury. Overuse, yeah. Right. That That one was huge. And I think PG's was overuse, even though he hasn't been playing as much he's, he's just getting injured kind of the whole year yeah though, beverly right? too i mean yeah. he's been eating up a lot of minutes yeah so keep tuning in guys every sunday we're going to be here talking a little bit about how injuries happen to pro athletes why they happen the prehab the rehab protocol the fantasy implications what this means for you coming down the stretch in your leagues and we want to hear from you guys so like comment subscribe let us know what you want to see what you think and we'll be able to talk a little bit more about that content thanks for tuning in that's mike i'm al This is Matt, we're the Injury Gurus, and we'll see you guys next week. Cheers.